Hey everyone, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Today I'm going to be going over five beginner birding mistakes and how to prevent them. In the about seven years I've been birding, I've done just about all these things and I'm sure I'll do some of them in the future. Uh, but this video is mostly aimed at people who are going out and looking for specific species of birds. But if you're just kind of interested in birds in general or photography, videography, some of these things might apply to you and might also help you out. nothing worse than getting to your birding location only to realize that you left your SD card in your laptop and you're not able to get videos or pictures of the species that you just found. Or if you're looking at a bird, you're getting great views and then your camera batteries die and you don't have a backup. Uh, so it's really important to make sure that your gear is ready to go and that things like camera batteries are charged up and that you have backups. Um, I normally carry backup SD cards, I carry backup batteries, I carry backup battery chargers. Sometimes I'll even bring more than one camera, it depends on what kind of trip I'm doing. Another one is making sure that you have like a lens cleaning cloth, something like these microfiber. You definitely don't want to use like paper towel or anything you want, like a microfiber safe for lens cloth. Uh, but your camera lens can get dirty really easily and then that can affect your photos and videos too. So it's important to be cleaning your lens every once in a while. As far as the SD card thing goes, is that was one that really annoyed me is when I would take my SD card out to uh, upload my photos, I forget to put it back in, I'd grab my camera and then I wouldn't have an SD card. So what I do now is when I take my SD card out, I leave this open and I'll put my camera down like this so that when I grab it, I go, oh yeah, this is open. There's no SD card in there. So that helps a little bit too. Uh, just little, little things like that. You can kind of remind yourself you don't have gear ready to go, but it's important after a long day, I know the last thing you want to do is get up and charge all the batteries and stuff that you just used, but it helps if you have all your gear ready to go because if a rare bird does get reported, then you can just grab it and go. I know um, one birder who does a lot of birding throughout the US, he has like a travel bag ready with all his travel stuff, like extra clothes and all that, because uh, he might just go out at any second. If you're going after a rare bird, it's a good idea to get as much information as possible about where it's been hanging out. Uh, check eBird, if you have like a listserv, check those reports out and reach out to people and ask them. This is definitely easier if you know some of the people that have seen the bird. You can just text your friends say like, hey, like what are the details about this bird at this specific location? But even if you don't, you can still try to reach out to those people and see. It's a good way to meet other birders, kind of get that community going and uh, l lets other people know that you're interested. So if they go out to chase something else, they might invite you along too, and you can invite them along. And it's a good way to build a community. But it's also terrible if you go to a location trying to find a bird, and it turns out it's private property, it's restricted access, or it's only accessible by boat. Uh, that's just like a terrible feeling. So the more research you can do, the better. Also, if it's a specific species, listening to the call, watching videos about it, looking at photos, so you know everything about this bird and you've contacted other birders so you know where it's hanging out, kind of the habits that it does. Some will have um, specific behaviors that they do that others might not. I had this situation happen to me with a Couch's Kingbird in Louisiana. It was at this boat landing and so everyone was e-birding it at the specific boat landing. And it was in between classes so I didn't have time to do research. So I kind of screwed up on this one. But I ended up going to drive to see it and I got to this boat landing and I said, this is a pretty expansive place. I don't know where to start. So I messaged one of my friends and she said, oh, it's not actually at the boat landing. It's down the road a little bit at this location, but everyone's just been e-birding it at the boat landing. <laughs> so that was tough. But if I didn't um, reach out to her, I wouldn't have known. And then when I got to that location, it was right there and it was easy to find. But I was really thankful that I was able to reach out to her and have her give me that information. So definitely doing your research. Also for that, I ended up putting the specific uh, GPS coordinates in my checklist because um, I didn't want other people to do the same thing. So if you are submitting, being as specific as possible, unless it's like a sensitive species you're worrying, worried about uh, is normally a good thing. This is something we normally see with people just starting out in birding or they're birding in a new location. This happened in Costa Rica a couple times and I was just there, but you'll see a bird, you'll think, oh, it looks like this one that's in my field guide. Or that's a Merlin bird ID, the bird identification app maybe told you it was a certain species. And then you like put it into eBird and it'll say it's really rare. And then you're like, wait, is that really it? And then sometimes if you do more research, you find, oh, it's this actually less rare, but similar looking species. And so that happens a lot. So before you tell everybody you found this really rare bird, 
make sure you confirm it first. So do a little extra research, um, look up a couple more sources or reach out to friends who are birders. There's also bird ID groups on Facebook uh, where you can ask questions and post photos. But also sometimes beginner birders just do find rare birds, which is really cool. I remember this happened, uh, Ryan and I found a red shouldered hawk. And I remember the eBird reviewer was like, don't actually put down that you saw one if you didn't see one. And we had photos of it and we're like, bam, here it is. And you know, that's what it was. But uh, just make sure that you're doing your research before reporting something super rare. And if eBird's flagging it, then uh, do some additional research, but don't be afraid to consult other people as well. People are normally pretty nice about helping out with that kind of thing. In certain cases I've seen birders get really excited about birding and they kind of just go all in. They buy these really big lenses and expensive stuff and they're excited to take all these great photos. And then they get out into the field and they're not able to get the views or the quality photos that they're really looking for and they get really frustrated and discouraged. And this is something I definitely don't like to see because I want people to be excited about birding. And I think when you're starting out, something a little more versatile, uh, like, you know, the Panasonic Lumix FZ80 or similar, just kind of like super zoom, point and shoot, easy to use type cameras are really good. I've also heard good things about the Nikon Cool Picks. I've never tried it, so I can't really say anything about it. But, you know, just getting gear that is versatile, maybe just a pair of binoculars when you're starting out even. Um, just so you kind of enjoy the experience right off the bat and don't be too hard on yourself. If you're not taking the type of pictures that you want to be taking, it takes a long time to get to that level and uh, a lot of experience. Any, any photographer, you know, pro videographer will tell you that they've spent a lot of time working on their craft. And if you do have that, like you bought that really big camera, it's not working out, don't be afraid to just put it on the shelf for a little bit, like get down to basics. And then once you feel more comfortable with it, picking it up again, and trying it out. This one's tough because people have commitments that can't just leave immediately, like school, work, uh, you know, weddings, other important things. But normally if a rare bird is reported, your best chance of seeing it is if you can leave immediately to try to find it. Uh, Ryan and I found this out when we started, like we'd see something rare was reported, we'd be like, oh, well, let's see if it was sticks around and we wait a couple days, then we'd go and then it was gone. And, so normally, as soon as that report comes in, your best chance is to go see the bird right away. You know, don't be reckless, don't be speeding, breaking the law or anything like that. But just kind of as a general rule, the earlier you can go try to find something, the better. There's a lot of one day wonders, birds that just show up for a day and then they're gone or only a couple hours, especially during spring migration, things are coming and going really fast. So it's good to uh, get out there as soon as you can. I remember there was a Barrow's Golden Eye in Sheboygan. It was the kind of thing where Ryan and I went to go see it and uh, the birders were like, it literally just took off five minutes ago. And before we left, I remember we were like, just about ready to go. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna eat a bowl of cereal first. And then when, I, when we found out it took off, I was like, if I didn't eat that bowl of cereal, we would have seen this bird. <laughs> so get out there as quick as you can. Um, you'll have your best chance at seeing it. Um, but people also have different comfort levels. So, you know, if you need that bowl of cereal to not be angry or hangry the rest of the day, like go ahead and, and take it. But just that's my advice is normally as soon as you can get out, the better. So those are your five beginner birding mistakes to avoid. Uh, so if you've done any of these, you know, I've done most of them. Let us know in the comments your experience with it. And uh, also if you guys have any tips for beginner birders, uh, also let us know in the comments. But birding is super fun. If you're just starting out, there's a lot to learn the first year. There's so many new species to explore. And it's just um, something that I've gotten into way more than I thought I would. And it's, it's brought a lot of value to my life. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.